Hello and welcome to the third video in this series to help you remember quotations so that you'll get the very top grades. Today is obviously spaced practice which again is explained by the learning scientists on their website. Look out for the link up here later in the video. Uh, you can see the six skills that they teach you. I've already taught you elaboration and dual coding and if you click on any of these um, symbols they'll take you to the resources you need to do this for any subject. But we are just focusing on quotations. So I think your first step should be to write the quotation out uh, but with only the first and last letters of each word in the right place and the rest of the word should be jumbled up. So if we try this one on Macbeth, uh, you can see that uh, it doesn't satisfy the spell checker, but we've got the right first letter and the right second letter, and so you can kind of work out what the quotation is, even if, we, if you don't know it. Uh, so I'll give you a clue, that must be have. This we can probably work out is snake, and if you know the play, we have scorched the snake, not killed it. Now, forcing your brain to think harder is a really great way to make you remember. And that's what jumbling up the letters does. It really makes you think harder. You probably really struggle to get scorched. I know I did, even though I, I put the letters in that order. Now, once you've done that a couple of times, that quotation becomes easy to get uh, from this presentation of it. So you now need another form of retrieval. So this time I'm going to ask you just to write the first and last letters of each word uh, and leave a gap for the letters that are originally there. Here I would also encourage you to leave exactly the right gap. So there are there is the right gap for the number of letters that fits in the word. So that same quotation we have scorched the snake, not killed it. And that really helps you again because you're having to work that much harder to remember the missing words. Then the next level of difficulty is to only have the first letters. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. And hopefully you can see that that becomes much more challenging. In my previous video, we talked about drawing a very quick picture for each of the quotations you need to remember and then looking at the picture on its own uh, to see if you can remember the full quotation from it. That again is an example of retrieval practice. Now there is a big danger of just using quotations on their own. They're not that useful to you even if you can just remember them. So the next stage of your retrieval practice has got to be using them in some way and this is my favorite technique. So write about your character or theme and you're going to try and use as many quotations as possible on a single page. Now, in, when you first start this, you might find you can only write um, a third of a page or half a page. And, but after a while, you'll be stopping at the end of the page and thinking, crikey, I've still got more quotations to use. Um, now, it's important because you're practicing here you don't need to write in massive P paragraphs with loads and loads of explanation. You can if you choose, uh, but you can also write really quickly, trying to link as many quotations together as possible. So, uh, for example, if you want to practice the skill of just remembering quotations for the right um, essay titles, then you really just want to get as many quotations into your paragraphs as you can. If, on the other hand, you're practicing the exam skill of how to use quotations to go through different interpretations, then you're going to write in more detail and not have quite as many quotations on the page. And you have to decide which stage of your revision you're at. And what I'd encourage you to do here is um, try some, you know, write a, a page worth of uh, notes, not notes, sorry, sentences linking quotations together and post them in the comments below and uh, I will perhaps make a video, I'll certainly comment on them, and the great thing is other viewers will be able to steal them, and you will be able to steal the efforts of other viewers, and that way we all get better at revision. And then a final way, which is also an elaboration technique, 
but combines all the elements of retrieval practice is to write your quotations on a mind map and then you'll have lines on the mind map which show how they link to themes or to characters and to each other so you'll see the links between them and obviously you'll have pictures which make it easier to remember them and easier to test yourself or to get someone else to borrow your mind map and tell you what the picture is and ask you to remember the quotation and what it links to. So that was retrieval practice. Now it's very likely you might have a different way of practicing this and that doesn't matter. The research on retrieval practice is really interesting. It says as long as you keep trying to remember things it doesn't matter the form in which you try to remember them. However, in the strategies I've given you, I have taken you a step further. And these are the ones that make you connect ideas. So the page of A4 version and the mind map version, those will be even more useful to you than normal retrieval practice. Because you won't just remember the quotation on its own, you'll start to remember it in relation to all the other quotations you learned. That will prepare you for writing your conceptualized arguments in the exam. Uh, well, to finish, if you have a retrieval practice that you find better, please post it in the comments below and uh, I'll learn something new. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos to get you the top grades. See you soon on my channel.